uh, it's a great honor to uh, and a great pleasure also to uh, talk here to um, Alain's birthday. So I, I have been knowing him for uh, approximately 30 years. I mean, I, uh, I think the first time we met, it was in Oberbolfach, 88. No, I <laughs> no, don't spoil <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I hope I will correct myself also later. Uh, 88, no, it, it was, I mean, uh, something special because I, I met, met you there with uh, Pierre uh, at the same time and it was a really uh, a lucky e event, I mean, uh, scientifically speaking for, for me. And, um, um, uh, so we collaborated, uh, I mean, uh, on a regular basis uh, from time to time. Uh, I mean, I collaborated with, with you and with Pierre and sometimes together, all three. And actually, you're right, I mean, the first time it was, uh, and it was uh, reminded uh, to me, uh, it was recorded to me by uh, Gerhard uh, Racha, who is here, that it was actually in Luxembourg That's in uh, uh, 87. <laughs> and um, uh, the, uh, I, I don't remember the talk you gave. I mean, uh, <laughs> I hope you excuse me. Uh, but I think, I think it was uh, related on um, something I'm going to mention later in my talk. And, uh, but it could be something different because as you, you all know, I mean, um, <laughs> Uh, Alain has a broad range of interests, so it could be something different, but uh, you, you will tell me what, uh, what you talk. I mean, I, I guess it's, uh, it's related to what I'm going to, um, to mention. By the way, at the same me meeting, uh, there was also uh, George uh, Mackey there, and uh, um, it's strange, but it's, um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, strongly based on uh, part of the work of, of Mackey. So, uh, I will start uh, talking about dual groups, actually. It could, uh, the title could have been dual groups of infinite groups. So, I, I will just, uh, here is a plan. I mean, I will talk uh, uh, very quickly on, on finite group. And then I move to uh, representation. That's the, uh, the main focus, unitary representation of infinite groups. And then dual groups, which are... Uh, which one can associate to discrete groups, discrete infinite groups, and then uh, characters. I will explain this. So uh, just uh, a reminder, if you have a, a finite group, G, then you, uh, you have a finite dimensional representation, you can decompose it as a direct sum of a reducible representation. Uh, uh, one fact is that this decomposition is not unique. I mean, if you have a, a, a multiple for an irreducible representation, you can decompose this in, in several different ways. But you can get um, uniqueness if you uh, actually, if you, you put together the multiples of, of, uh, uh, of irreducible representations. Then you get a unique decomposition. This is what's called the central or uh, isotypical decomposition. So we have uniqueness if you, uh, you do this. And um, okay, so you cannot hope for more. Now, uh, there is a, a way uh, to study representation of groups, finite groups. Um, that was, uh, as I noticed, um, first uh, considered by Amy Nutter in uh, 1929. Um, you go to the group algebra and then you extend every representation and you get the representation of the group algebra. And then you have, I mean, bijection, uh, you can translate everything, um, uh, you can translate the representation theory of G, the representation theory of this ring, and it preserves everything, I mean, uh, reducibility, equivalence, and so on. And then you have something, uh, you can actually uh, um, parameterize the reducible representation by their kernels, the kernels in the, in the group algebra. These are maximal ideals. It happens to be maximal ideas, but uh, these are also primitive ideals in the sense that a uh, kernel of reducible representation are called primitive ideals. So it happens to be the same for, uh, for finite groups. Now, 
uh, this is a way to uh, study uh, representation uh, of a group. Another way, uh, which was actually uh, not uh, 2000, uh, no, I mean, not 1990, as you may think, but uh, 1890 by Frobenius, who actually introduced uh, the subject, I mean, systematic way uh, of uh, representation theory, representation of finite groups. And actually, he uh, already noticed that you may consider characters of representation. And uh, this is a more, of course, more concrete object. These are functions, simply function on the group. On the group. And then every representation is determined by, uh, by its character. And uh, you get a bijection, actually, between uh, you can parameterize the representation by their characters. The characters in this case are, uh, uh, is, uh, is a space. Every, every character is a trace function, is a central function class function, a uh, function uh, which is uh, um, invariant under conjugation, and um, there are special ones. I mean, these are uh, minimal central idempotents of the group algebra. So this is a way, I mean, without knowing that what you learn al already, I think, in, uh, um, in the first year at university. Sorry? You need a certain scala to make it an idempotent, I think. You have a car? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, normalized. Yeah, yeah, we, we, have to, we have to normalize. You're right. We have a normalization center that is important, normalized in the right way. <laughs> okay. Um, this, you, 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 you learn that it's, it's possible to determine, actually, uh, sometimes it's easier to determine this uh, class function than determine the reducible representation. That's what uh, already uh, Frobenius did. Now, we uh, move on to uh, general groups. I mean, uh, if you have a locally compact group, uh, you may uh, consider, or I will consider only unitary representation in Hilbert space. You can also, of course, uh, take Banach spaces, but then, uh, I mean, uh, um, less, uh, uh, less is known uh, in general. So we have a notion of ir equivalence, irreducible, uh, irreducibility, uh, I mean, um, natural notion. And then we, we look at the uh, unitary dual, which is the space of irreducible representation, uh, of equivalence classes of irreducible representation. And uh, this is, uh, I mean, the aim is usually to, uh, at least the first aim is to, uh, uh, to determine this, this set. And, um, uh, but the second one is uh, connected with the composition of reputation. I mean, uh, determining irreducible representation is not the, the whole story. You have also to, uh, for instance, I mean, the, uh, maybe the most important representation that the, uh, already for finite group is the, uh, the regular representation. So you, you, you want to, to decompose uh, given natural representation in terms of irreducible. Actually, the first thing is that, uh, the first thing which happens is that you uh, direct sum uh, do not suffice. You have to consider something, I mean, uh, more uh, elaborated but similar, I mean, no, 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 no problem. I mean, that uh, you have to look at the direct integral of representation, of irreducible representation in this sense. And, um, uh, so th this already happens in the in for Rn or Zn if you if you want. I mean the regular representation is actually not a direct sum of uh, reducible one. Reducible representation of Rn are simply the uh, the character here, one dimensional. There is no uh, uh, no invariant one dimensional subspace of the regular representation of Rn. <coughs> so if you the Fourier transform is actually uh, gives you, you may interpret this as a, as a decomposition direct integral of irreducible representation. So th this already happened, I mean, there is nothing, uh, uh, nothing strange about this. Um, okay, now, some group, for some group actually, we are going to define them a little bit later, which are called of group of type one. Uh, you have indeed, I mean, uh, satisfactory decomposition theory, you de can decompose every representation 
um, as a direct integral of multiple of irreducible one, exactly as the, the, uh, of the, the, the case of the finite group. And this decomposition is unique, um, exactly in the same sense as the, the, the um, for finite group. But something new happened here for other groups, which happen to exist. You may have decomposition of a representation uh, in irreducibles, which are completely uh, disjoint to each other, nothing to do uh, one with the other, and it uh, means that you have a decomposition over a set of reducible representation, another one about a set of a uh, disjoint set of reducible representation. So that's really strange, and, uh, but you can see this already for a free group in 60 generators. <laughs> <laughs> it works also, of course, for two generators. Uh, <laughs> Um, you, you if you take um, the copy of Z generated by one of the generators, you induce this, and you take a direct, uh, sorry, you take characters which are simply parameterized by this circle, you induce these characters to the group, and you take direct integral. So this, this thing is irreducible, this is by Mackey's theory, and uh, they all are pairwise non-equivalent. This is also part of, of Mackey theory. So you get to really, uh, for every i, a, um, a different, so 60 <laughs> uh, decompositions. So th that's not satisfactory, of course. It tells you that already that the uh, usable representation are maybe not the right object to consider for, uh, um, for groups like uh, free groups. And uh, that's the, uh, the point of my talk, actually. You, you have to replace the reducible representation, the space of reducible representation, by uh, some other spaces. Uh, OK, well first, we saw already in the center of decomposition, you have to look at multiples of the irreducible representation. These are factorial representation. So, uh, uh, I, I just, if you have a representation, you can look at the, uh, the closure uh, for the weak topology of the linear span of the uh, operators given by the group, by the, the representation. This is a Fonoman algebra, and it's called a factor. These are the building blocks, actually, of Fonoman algebras. If the center is trivial, and the representation is said to be uh, uh, factorial if it's, uh, if it's the center of this uh, generated uh, fundamental algebra of um, pi of g is, uh, is trivial. So you have examples. Uh, already the building block we saw uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for finite groups, multiple of reducible representation are factorial representation. But the... Um, uh, the thing is that you have other, uh, uh, there are other um, factorial representations which are not of this type, and this was a discovery by uh, von Neumann and Murray. And, um, and um, <coughs> this is actually the, the reason why uh, there is a theory of von Neumann algebra. So, I mean, that's, uh, if you look at the regular representation of the free group, two generators, or PGLDQ, uh, then this is a uh, factorial representation, but it's not uh, a multiple of uh, an irreducible one. So there is something which is happening here. And uh, this actually, one should think, one could think that the factorial representation are the, maybe the, the right, uh, um, you should replace the irreducible uh, representation, with the dual group by, but the, sorry, the dual space by the uh, factorial representation. But be aware that the uh, irreducible representation are, of course, uh, factorial. So you are, uh, you are getting more. So it's not the right space. Uh, so not, you're not going to take all factorial representation. I'm, I'm coming to, uh, to this point. And uh, so, uh, again, if you look now, if you replace irreducible uh, decomposition, but sorry, decomposition in irreducible uh, pieces by uh, decomposition in, in uh, factorial pieces, 
Then you have a satisfactory uh, decomposition theory. Uh, every representation decomposes as a uh, direct integral of, of factor representation, and this is somehow unique if you, uh, okay, uh, in, 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 the, in the precise sense which is given here. Uh, so factorial representation uh, are, are better, but uh, of course, uh, uh, I mean, there is still a problem of uh, determining them. And uh, here I'm coming back to a group of type 1, which I didn't define, that we introduced already. Um, so a group of type 1 is simply uh, defined as a group for which you don't have factorial representation um, besides the obvious one, so the one which are multiple of irreducible representation. And uh, there is a natural borrowed structure on, on, on the uh, space of unitary uh, or irreducible representation, which is called the Mackey borrowed structure. And um, here is a, a, a basic fact about this group. And um, actually a negative uh, fact it tells you that if the group uh, is not of type 1, then uh, you have no uh, chance to uh, determine uh, the space of all irreducible representations up to equivalence. Uh, and um, said in another way, I mean, uh, well, you, you, you have um, uh, this space is a standard Bohr space if and only if the group is of type 1. So, uh, so for a group which are not of type 1, uh, you have really to do something, something else, uh, to look for other dual spaces. And here are some examples. I mean, a group of type 1 abelian groups are abelian, for instance, abelian groups, semi-simple Lie groups, nilpotent Lie groups. But there are already among the Lie groups, uh, some groups which are not of type 1, some solvable Lie groups. And uh, nearly all interesting uh, infinite discrete groups are not type 1. And there is a theorem by Thoma, uh, 1964, is that uh, um, unless G is virtually abelian, uh, G is not type 1 if G is discrete. And if it's virtually abelian, actually, uh, representation theory is something you, you can uh, you can, uh, you can determine, so there is no problem in them. So, interesting infinite discrete group are not type 1. That's the, uh, uh, the moral of the story. Now, I'm coming back to this uh, idea of Amy Nutter, which you have, you can do for, uh, um, you can perform for uh, infinite groups. Now you have to, to replace the, uh, um, the group algebra by the C star algebra of the group, which is a completion of this, uh, for, for, for this norm here, of the uh, group algebra. So I'm taking G discrete, but um, uh, one can do the same, I mean, uh, in a similar way, uh, uh, this construction for any uh, locally compact group. And then you have, as we saw in the, for finite group, for finite groups, the, um, you can extend every representation, unitary representation of G, to the representation of this uh, sister algebra. And you have a uh, bijection between uh, the representation theory of G and of the sister algebra. Now we can look, um, as we did, to the space uh, of kernels of, um, of this extended representation, so this kernel in the sister algebra. And, um, okay, this is a new, uh, new dual space, if you want. I mean, for finite group, we saw we, uh, we had a bijection. <coughs> and uh, the question is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, is this a reasonable uh, uh, dual space? There is another way to, uh, uh, to introduce this space. I mean, uh, this space is simply you can look at it as simply forgetting about the sister algebra. Uh, at the group level, you, you can simply say this is the, it classifies the reducible representation not up to equivalence, 
as jihad, as does jihad, but up to weak equivalent. So weak equivalent means that every matrix coefficient of pi uh, is can be approximated by matrix coefficient of sigma and vice versa. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is space of reducible representation, uh, quotient space modulo uh, stronger. Uh, uh, or weaker, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, uh, equivalence relation. So with bigger classes. <laughs> and uh, it has a natural topology. This is, uh, I mean, uh, Jacobson topology. And um, when G uh, is type 1, you don't get anything new in the sense that this map is a bijection. So that's really uh, type 1 are in, in this sense, I mean, in several <laughs> senses now, uh, as we saw. Uh, uh, similar to finite groups, with some technical difficulties. You have to replace direct sum by direct integrals and so on, but uh, essentially uh, the uh, things are, are working very well. Now, uh, when G is not type 1, what, uh, what does happen? Um, there is an, a um, um, remarkable result by Efros, uh, 63. This Prime, prime G is, uh, is always a standard Borel space. I mean, here's probably what should uh, have a second countable, but my, my, my groups are always second countable, so uh, for this talk. Uh, so it's a standard Borel space. So it means that this space is, uh, at least there is no, uh, no abstraction, no obvious abstraction to, to classify this space. So this is something you one could do for some groups, discrete groups, maybe others. Yeah, others now, uh, oh, uh, now we, uh, there is, so th this uh, part of uh, one program, I mean, was to translate um, uh, Amy Nutter's uh, approach to um, unitary representation of an infinite group. Uh, we have still, uh, what's missing is the, uh, the part by uh, Frobenius with the characters. And that's something you can do. Uh, I mean, okay, um, there are some problems. I mean, we, we are going to define uh, characters. It's something more complicated, as you see. Uh, characters are something on the, uh, which live on the, uh, the group <coughs> Cesar algebra. These are linear functionals on, some on, on an ideal here, which is, uh, uh, I mean, they are finite value. I mean, it should be something like uh, a measure, but it could be infinite. I mean, we are, we are of course, used of, of measure which could be infinite. I mean, and that's the same thing. Uh, there is a part where it's finite. This is an ideal. And um, it's, uh, it could be, I mean, uh, on the other, uh, on other elements of the sister algebra, it, it could be infinite. And there is a condition of semi-finiteness. Uh, you can approximate every um, uh, every element in the in the um, in the Cesar algebra by elements with finite trace. And you, you have this trace property here. And it's a character if it's uh, somehow this condition. It's uh, somehow it tells you that it's uh, it's extremal in the set of in the, the set of all uh, of all traces. And this is the space of your characters. And um, sometimes, um, or you are lucky and the character is finite, so uh, that means that the, uh, it takes only finite value on all uh, the sister algebra, on the whole sister algebra. This corresponds somehow to a probability measure. And we denote by E of G the set of finite characters. Okay. So, so in your condition, the second condition is the point. For every x, there exists a y. Yeah. Now the plus notation is the positive definite elements, yes? Yes, yes. The positive element in the sister algebra. Yeah, but then it is zero is also... Ah, there is, ah so every x... Every x is approximated somehow, um, or uh, yeah, dominates something which is non-zero, yeah. Every non-zero x. Non-zero, of course. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so these are characters. So I, uh, it's 
difficult to digest. We, we will see some examples. Uh, here are a few examples. I mean, characters of type 1. Um, here, how you uh, get characters of type 1, of uh, what called type 1 characters. Uh, take, uh, uh, assume that the, um, uh, the image of the sister algebra, you, you, see, you, you know, the, um, uh, I recall that you can extend pi to the sister algebra. If it contains all compact operators, uh, it's irreducible. I mean, uh, for this, it's, it suffices to contain one compact operator. You look at the ideal of the elements of the CSR algebra, which are mapped to compact operators. This is a two-sided ideal. And um, you get a trace on this. Uh, simply the, the, the uh, natural trace gives you a character. So this is one way of obtaining characters on the group. Uh, OK, we will see examples of this. Actually, finite characters are uh, easy to, uh, to understand. Uh, finite characters are simply given our continuous class function, which are um, of positive type and normalized and extremal with this property. So finite characters are actually uh, easy to, uh, to understand. These are simply a class function with special properties. Um, infinite characters are, are, are are actually more mysterious. Uh, for Lie groups, for instance, usually, but there is no general theorem about this, uh, given by conjugation invariant measure or distribution. So these are still co more complicated objects, but somehow uh, familiar objects. Now, I uh, come back and try to relate characters to uh, the primitive ideal space. Uh, so Every character gives you a, a factor representation. This is the extremality property of the, of the character. It gives you, uh, if you look at the, uh, there is a representation associated to this, and you look at the CSR, the, the fundamental algebra, it's a factor. And the kernel, it happens that the kernel is, uh, is a primitive ideal. It's the, the kernel of an irreducible representation. So you start with, we have a fact, factor representation, but the kernel is always a, a, the kernel of an irreducible one. So this irreducible one doesn't interest you really. I mean, you, you just know that it's, there is one, and there are usually a, a huge bundle of, of, of uh, irreducible representation which are, uh, have the same, um, uh, uh, the same kernel. Actually, what you can do is simply, if you have a factor representation, you can decompose this as a direct integral of irreducible representation. That you can always do. What you, uh, you don't have is just uniqueness. But you can always decompose an irreducible. And all the irreducible pieces will have the same kernel, if the representation factor representation have the same kernel as the uh, original uh, representation. So, but they're not interesting, I mean, because they're not unique. There is not, nothing special about them. And um, OK, we have the same thing about a finite, um, uh, finite character. What I'm, going, what, I'm, what I'm trying to, uh, to convey to you is the idea first that prime of G is, um, is a good dual. It's worth to be determined for some uh, discrete groups. But you have also this, uh, the space of characters here, and maybe the finite characters. These are also good objects. Maybe uh, they suffice to parameterize prime of G, maybe not. Uh, we will so see some example. Uh, so, uh, when G is type 1, there is nothing new. What, what, uh, although it's interesting or in this case to determine uh, or uh, to look at the characters. That's what uh, Gelfand Harishandra did for semi simple Lie groups. So, they determined, uh, uh, sometimes without determining the reducible presentation, uh, these are type 1 groups. Um, they determine the characters, so as, as Frobenius did. So even if for type 1, it's interesting to look at the, the characters. But I'm, I'm interested in this talk uh, on uh, groups which are not type 1. Uh, here are two results on, on characters, relation between characters and, and the, uh, this primitive ideal space. 
if G is sol connect a solvable Lie group, we saw that, uh, I told you that uh, some of them are not type 1. But still, uh, this is a remarkable result by Pukansky. Um, there is a, uh, um, you can parameterize the kernels of irreducible representation by the characters. And he has, a, uh, even more than that, he has a procedure to determine this, these characters. As, as distribution on, on, on the group, I mean. And uh, um, here is something uh, interesting. If, you, if your group is nilpotent, um, I mean discrete group, you polynomial growth, I mean virtually nilpotent group, then you don't have infinite characters. So things are easier here. And already the primitive idea space is determined by this uh, this set, this class function. And this set you can, uh, 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 I mean for concrete, if, you, if we are given a concrete group G, an important group, you, you, can, uh, you can really, um, I mean there is an algorithm to determine this uh, E of G. And uh, here's just a remark, probably, I mean, uh, Pukansky's result is probably true for, uh, for any D group, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know how to prove it. <laughs> it's, uh, probably it's just, uh, I mean, you have to put pieces together, but anyway. Uh, here are about finite characters. Uh, so I, uh, these are the characters which are uh, less mysterious, as I told you. Simply class function on the group, which are uh, of positive type and uh, extremal with this property. Uh, already uh, Toma, uh, who was advocating actually uh, this space of finite characters as a dual for discrete groups. He determined for S infinity. Um, so the inductive limit of the uh, symmetric uh, groups, the finite symmetric groups. Uh, there is a result by uh, Kirillov of GLNK for an infinite field. I'm coming back to this, which was completed uh, for SL2K by um, Peterson and Tom in uh, 2016. Um, now, for potent, I mean, there is, um, uh, I mean, a bunch of resu results and, and a way to determine this E of G and so on. There is no, f I mean, uh, no compact formula, but uh, you know how to proceed to uh, determine um, E of G. I, um, some years ago, I, I, I did it for SLNZ, for N bigger for three. So two is special, as you may expect, I mean, because it's essentially the free group and then uh, uh, probably no way to, I don't know, uh, uh, or, or it seems to be difficult to determine uh, E of G for this case. And uh, there is a result which didn't appear, I mean, uh, in, um, in uh, publication by Peterson about uh, lattices in higher rank, uh, simple Lie groups. Here is just a remark, characters, you can view characters as generalization of normal subgroup because the uh, indicator function of, uh, of a normal subgroup is a, is a trace and uh, uh, a character is something more general. But in fact, it's, 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 uh, in some sense, uh, it generalizes invariant random subgroups. But okay, I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, here is uh, an example, uh, quickly. Uh, Lamplight a group. You are all familiar with this, I guess. Uh, it's given by transformation. Uh, if you look at the transformation of the dual group, um, uh, sorry, the transformation given um, by shifting a coordinate on the dual group, uh, which is the um, uh, 2 to, uh, to the z. Um, so, Characters as here, uh, this was shown by Guichardet in 63, uh, and this is essentially a, a kind of Mackey theory, uh, which you can do not only for reducible representation, but also for factorial representation. So, uh, for instance, uh, orbits gives you irreducible representation. So here, you're shifting x is 2 to the z, and t is, is the shift operator. And orbits are, are give you um, um, irreducible representation. Quasi-orbits, I mean um, closure of orbits. I mean, um, 
uh, I mean, two, two elements are, are equivalent, have the same quasi-orbit, if, if the closure of their orbit is the same, they um, give you a primitive ideal. Invariant probability measure give you a finite characters. And then, if you look at infinite invariant measure, but you have to be careful here, because you're not interested just on, 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 on representation by finite, by semi-finite factors, but uh, which are, should be uh, on the uh, um, non or finite on some non-zero element on the Cesar algebra. That makes the thing, I mean, they're called normal factorial representation where you're interested in or uh, traceable, uh, as uh, Dix Millet says, traceable representation. So that means that you, uh, you are not going to take any uh, uh, Borel measure. It has to be regular in order to, to get a really infinite character. But we have infinite characters here, so there's nothing strange about, um, or I mean, uh, nothing strange. I, I mean that you get some familiar object. So characters are connected, finite or infinite, are connected to some, uh, to some um, familiar object. And you see the difference between, uh, uh, between um, irreducible representation, which are given by orbit, if, if you want, by atomic measures, and, uh, and um, characters which are given by probability measure, invariant probability measure. So you, uh, you see the, uh, what's happening here. I'm moving to GLNK. Uh, I could talk about similar groups, but I, I will restrict to GLNK. If you take <coughs> GLNK, the finite character, this is killer of the result I told you about. There are only two. Actually, uh, the Dirac uh, fun uh, viewed as function, the Dirac function at, at the group unit and, and the uh, function equal one. And um, if K is an algebraic extension of finite field, then there is still no new character. So all characters are finite. And um, this was shown by Rosenberg, 89. And uh, moreover, this map here is actually a bijection. So everything is fine. And uh, Rosenberg asked whether there are infinite characters, say, on, on GLN Q. Excuse me. So do you have any restriction, restriction for the value of L? Sorry? Do you have no, 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 no. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, different from one. <laughs> yeah. Two is okay, right? Yeah, two is okay, three is okay, 60 is okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, just one, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, one, one is uh, probably true, but anyway, uh, no, is it true? No, I don't know, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's probably, I mean, that's the, there is no restriction. I, I look first at, at GL2Q. Uh, as you know, uh, GL2Q acts on a tree. Actually, you embed GL2Q in GL, uh, GL2QP for some P, and then you have a reaction of GL, the, you have the Bruyatitz uh, tree associated to this. And uh, so you have an action on a tree. And here is a, a wonderful construction by uh, Pierre and uh, Pierre Juc and uh, Alain, Alain Valette. If you have a group acting on a tree, uh, they constructed, I mean, in, uh, they proved for these groups uh, K amenability by <laughs> constructing a, a, a Fredo module, but we don't, uh, we don't have to know uh, what, uh, what this is uh, precisely. But they constructed the family of representation, pi t, all defined on the space of uh, vertices, L2 of vertices, with the following property. I mean, uh, you start P0 is a natural representation on L2 of the vertices, and you end with uh, the natural representation on the space of edges plus the trivial representation, copy of uh, the uh, one, one dimensional space uh, which is fixed. And, um, and you have kind of deformation of this coming from P0 to P1 to the trivial representation. And along, I mean, the whole thing, this deformation, that's the uh, crucial property for me. 
uh, it's just P0 and PT differ uh, just by a finite rank operator. And moreover, uh, this is a continuous deformation. Uh, so you can read this in the original paper by uh, uh, Pierre and Alain, but there is a nice uh, account about this by uh, Pierre Jugue, uh, very nice, very short. I mean, uh, uh, I uh, liked it very much. <laughs> and um, okay, um, but this is a, a wonderful contraction. I mean, I uh, I use it to uh, now. I, if I look at two Q, uh, here uh, what I can say. If you are close to 1, starting from some t0 to 1, you can get the representation of this pi t. Maybe, uh, I, I guess, this pi t are not irreducible. And uh, you get a reducible representation, which is infinite dimensional, with and such that uh, it contains in its range the uh, algebra of compact operator. And they are not weakly equivalent to each other. So, uh, this is actually an uh, easy application of uh, Jules Vallet's construction because how do you get this compact operator? Um, this is essentially, um, I'm coming back maybe to uh, this slide here. What you have here, uh, what I don't have is uh, <laughs> chalk. <laughs> uh, Ah oui, tout le bureau. What you have here is that uh, actually uh, this difference is compact on the space uh, L2 of the vertices uh, for every element in the sister algebra of G. Now, uh, because sorry, um, because of this fact, I mean, uh, you're approaching here at uh, at p1 contains the the, uh, the trivial representation, and uh, p0 is the um, somehow the regular representation uh, or multiple, I, uh, uh, at least weakly con contained. Uh, so uh, pi not does not. I mean, this pi of t's. Um, um, at they, um, they weakly, uh, what I'm going to say, um, uh, sorry, this pi of t uh, don't weakly contain uh, pi naught because they are approaching the trivial representation and g is not amenable. So uh, you have, a, uh, you find the kernel of pi naught, uh, you have you find A, which is non-zero, which is in the kernel of pi naught and not in the kernel of pi t. And this is exactly, uh, this is the compact operator you're, you're looking at. So this is an easy application of, uh, of this result. But it tells you that you have uncountably many infinite character of GL2, Q. They are all of type 1. I'm not able to contract uh, infinite character of other types, maybe they are not. And I'm not sure that, they, uh, that these are all infinite character of type 1. It tells you also that prime, prime G is incountable. Uh, this was not the case for, uh, let's say, PGL2 um, over uh, uh, algebraic extension of a finite field. This was uh, just a finite set, the prime of G. Now, if we, uh, I move now to uh, GLN Q for bigger, for n bigger than three, here is a different way uh, to obtain uh, <coughs> a representation with infinite character. I take this H, which is kind of a maximal parabolic subgroup of G, and I take the quasi regular representation. And um, I claim this is uh, irreducible, infinite dimensional, of course, and uh, um, it contains in, in its range the compact operators. And here, um, what I'm using is just the following fact. The crucial fact is the, uh, for this age is um, 
what I called a uh, normal subgroup. Uh, maybe it's a uh, bad, uh, bad terminology. H is the a normal subgroup of G equal uh, GLM uh, Q, which means that uh, if you intersect H with its conjugates, so um, mal normal, I guess, is uh, if this is trivial, A normal, if this is amenable. That's the crucial fact, uh, at least for, uh, sorry, um, for three. Uh, I have actually, uh, for uh, n bigger than three, I have to, uh, another argument. Th that's uh, what's used here. And actually, um, the, uh, the crucial uh, thing which makes, uh, this already implies that the uh, uh, representation is reducible, this is Mackey's criterion. But the crucial fact is that uh, the trivial uh, representation, if we restrict the regular representation um, to H, it has a fixed point by, by H, that's obvious. That's one fact. And the other fact is that uh, actually because of this A normality, it's not weakly contained in the, in the rest, I mean in the, um, let's say, in, um, in, in um, um, yeah. zero, which is the orthogonal of the, the constant to H, to the space. So these are the two facts which uh, allow you to uh, produce um, I mean, uh, yeah, contained, but only only once, or uh, okay, <laughs> only once, and uh, so that, that means that you uh, you are splitting your representation into two pieces, two or the space H or L two into two pieces, two pieces, one which is finite dimensional and the orthogonal complement, which are invariant under H. And uh, uh, here, uh, the representation here is not weakly contained in, in, uh, in the representation given by here. And that's already suffice, that's a general fact for sister algebra to produce a uh, uh, compact non-zero compact operator. Once you have one, because it's reducible, you have all. So this gives you uh, already infinite, uh, sorry, yeah, I mean, um, a representation with an infinite character uh, of type 1. And actually, uh, you can, uh, instead of looking at the regular representation, you can look at, uh, you can take a character of H. There are uncountably many of them. You can induce this and you get something, the same thing. And uh, you produce in this way uncountably many um, um, representation which are uh, uh, which have infinite character. Okay, I, uh, I I could replace, of course. I mean, uh, what I did for GLN Q, you can do this for uh, algebraic group or a Q point of an algebraic group of a Q with Q rank bigger than one. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, so you can do. Okay, and um, I guess. It's the end of the story. Thank you, Alain. <laughs>
group acting on cube complexes. It's a project. <laughs> I mean, that's it. What do you think? There should be something like, no? I mean, you, you need somehow, uh, yeah. Maybe for, for, for the, 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 the element, but this is not only the element, this is the homotopy. That's the homotopy, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm using the homotopy. You can think in, the, in the case of buildings, for example, there's a you, you can do this, yeah. Element, but not the homotopy. Not yeah. the homotopy, and the homotopy is not. I mean, for me, it's not. Uh, I, I needed the uh, the homotopy because I have to go through to. Um, I have in mind a paper by I think by Brodsky, uh, Hickson, and Gentner and Hickson, where they do something on finite dimensional quasi-zero cube complex. Um, but it's it's way more difficult and way more um, subtle than for trees because, because of the many directions. And I'm not sure that you get trace class operators in particular. Mm -hmm. But th there is a point, I mean, uh, your talk in uh, 87, was it about uh, this Pierre-Jules-Ballet uh, construction? Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was a proof of the, of the Zellberg principle for, uh, for group acting on trees. And you, the point is that from, from this federal module, yeah. you, you, ext you extract a trace, and, and the, the funny thing is that out of something which is not equivalent, you get something which is, which is equivalent, which is really a trace. And this trace is not positive definite, but it gives you what you need for the Selberg principle. Just to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you see, you see I, uh, <laughs> my memory is uh, not uh, what it used to be. I mean, <laughs> okay, question? So, can, can you do something special for the primitive ideal space of circuit school? Um, Yeah, yeah. Um, I think something, <laughs> but not. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I I cannot tell you. I mean, the, here already, I'm not giving. I mean, maybe this is the whole story. I uh, uh, although I'm not sure. Um, you see, uh, where was it for uh, for GL two? We, we we stick to GL two, uh, GL two Q. I mean, a good thing or. I mean, uh, as we saw, I mean, there is no, um, no abstraction actually to describe prime of G. Uh, it could be, uh, but okay, you, you can say um, um, maybe, uh, I mean, uh, this infinite characters may give, give you uh, already a parameterization of prime of G. That's not impossible. So uh, for you can do for the um, actually for uh, for surface group, you you can do something similar with using SL2R and produce also um, um, infinite character, but al always of type one. Actually, I'm I'm not able to construct one single example for, for GL2 Q uh, or GLL3 or. Uh, of uh, a character of type 2, 2 infinity, right? 2, 1, I, I know there are no, uh, uh, only, only 2, but 2 infinity, um, maybe there are not, they, they, they don't exist, I don't know. And uh, so for subgroup, group, you, you can do something uh, similar. I probably, I mean, there must be something, some construction, similar construction to uh, Jules Ballet, no, uh, there is. I mean, Fredo module. And, and, I mean, with this, with the hot top, hot top, Probably, I mean, that that will work for any. No, uh, you can do something for SL two R also probably. Why SL two C maybe? Yes, yes, <laughs> but uh, it's more it's more complicated than uh, yeah. certainly okay. not with with finite rank of operators or phase class. I don't know. Yeah. I think this 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 is going not to. Yeah. Question is something can be done probably, <laughs> but 
uh, to which extent that's not clear. <laughs> okay, so there is no more question. Let's thank Mr. Gates.